We don't have we don't have time for that, really. Uh, uh, we are leaving all of you and myself, including a hurried life. The time is very, very expensive. So let's stop for with uh, applauding and uh, think together about the problem which we are confronting. There are two sides to this problem. One side is at the entry to this Station Berlin. You can see the huge billboard which reminds us about the Declaration of Human Rights, uh, which was composed by people coming from all over Europe after the harsh uh, experience of uh, totalitarianism and World War War. And they composed the list of essential universal human rights. The Article 12 of the Helsinki Agreement is that privacy is the right, is the human right, privacy. That is the one side of the problem. The other side of the problem, I will quote from David Brooks, a uh, very, very ingenious, very, in, very inquiring uh, article in New York Times on 15th April, not very long ago. And uh, the article is called The Lost Language of Privacy. What David Brooks says there, he unpacks the idea of uh, uh, privacy. He feels the need to unpack it, to bring it closer to the contemporary um, people because he says that more and more people have lost even the language of privacy and an understanding on why privacy is important. That is the diagnosis. He is not very original. Very many people say the same. Uh, we have accepted that privacy is not a particularly attractive thing. Why privacy is important? So David Brooks uh, wants to convince us, I quote again, there has to be a zone where half-formed thoughts and deli delicate emotions can grow and evolve without being exposed to the harsh glare of public judgment. To put it in the nutshell, privacy is important because there needs to be a time when you are alone with yourself, when you allow your half-baked, unfinished, underdetermined ideas, thoughts, emotions to mature. Uh, in the crowd, in the hubbub of the offline life, that is virtually unavailable. But uh, the interesting point is that we, being individuals, having won the right to individuality, uh, somehow lost interest, lost concern about the time of privacy. And we are even ill at ease when we find ourselves in our own company alone. You are fortunately, all of you are keeping some sort of a cellular telephone. It may be iPad, it may be iPhone, doesn't matter. You just, it is one reach uh, of your hand and you stop being alone. Now, that's a paradox. That's a paradox. In Hotel Berlin, Berlin, where the speakers for this conference are accommodated, uh, there is a big slogan over the entry which says, stay individual. And inside, if you enter the lobby, you will see again this idea of being individual unpacked. Uh, at one point, there is a huge billboard um, in beautiful calligraphy, it uh, tells the story. What does it mean to be individual? Well, it says there roughly, do whatever you like and do it more often. That is roughly the recipe for being an individual. 
which means that we explore, explore, uh, um, uh, uh, somehow drawing, drawing benefits from the idea of being individual, we are not finding a place among our likings about what we want to do uh, for privacy, for being alone with, with my own self, talking to self, receiving reply, consulting conscience, or whatever. Well, that's a very interesting story and, uh, of living in this paradox of our times. And uh, it is worth our while to think for a moment how we arrived where we are now. Uh, I am much, long, much older than most of you here, all of you here probably. <laughs> and uh, I remember when I was your age, um, we were dreaming about privacy. We were afraid of being constrained, being enforced, being trampled down, being told uh, all we should do and what should we abstain from doing. We were spied upon. You remember the nightmare of uh, uh, um, Orwell 1984 was a TV set which acted both ways. You can watch, you could watch television, but television could watch you and at any moment uh, interfere in your daily life. Now, uh, what was the horror of the time? We are treating as a privilege. It is very nice if you can use the Skype, if you can use uh, the two ways, uh, the two ways uh, communication. Uh, you like uh, sending Twitters, you like using your, uh, 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 your uh, credit card, um, you like uh, using your telephone, knowing, very well knowing, that all that is registered in big data somewhere there in unknown place where all this data is accumulated. It, the servers somewhere in a desert uh, in the United States know about your movements, about your probabilities of acting, of, uh, about your predilection, about your preferences, about your contact, about what you call the network, people which you associate with, um, with the help of the internet. They know about it much more than you yourself know. That's the problem. You are not aware even how much information there is. So instead of um, a dream of privacy, we are now dreaming of, we are now dreaming about publicity about being noticed, about being seen. Uh, the one very uh, witty journalist in France joked that if the great philosopher Descartes, who invented proof for our existence, saying, I am thinking, therefore I am, the contemporary Descartes would say, I am seen on the screen, and therefore I am. Change of front. Change of thought. We dream of escaping, but escaping what? The idea of privacy, I suggest to you, my dear friends, has changed its meaning. It was a very attractive idea, just to be free to do what you really like, not to be uh, suppressed in your wishes. The great German and Austrian um, a psychologist, philosopher Sigmund Freud pointed out writing in 1929, almost 100 years ago, that all the problems, all the difficulties, all the sufferings, pains of contemporary men and women come from the fact that we have surrendered much of our freedom of choice freedom of selecting what we want really to do, what we like to do, we surrendered it in order to get more security. Now, situation as if reversed. The idea of privacy is associated 
I don't know. I suggest it to you, but that's my suspicion. It suggests that not with the idea of being free and being individual, but with the idea of being lonely, being left alone, being abandoned, being neglected, or even being excluded. That is the price of the reversing, reversing uh, pre the tendency diagnosed and predicted for the future by the human Freud. Namely, we are now surrendering, uh, would like to surrender much of our freedom, freedom of privacy, freedom of deciding for the sake of a little bit more security. Why it is so, ladies and gentlemen? Well, uh, another great uh, thinker, German thinker, uh, Ulrich Beck, uh, developed theory of individualization. That is really what separates 1929 from 2015. Individualization. Bringing now a situation when each us of us, as an individual, is expected to find, develop, and apply the solutions to socially produced problems. Not the state, not the people up there, not the people sitting in the government uh, who once uh, uh, promised to take care of providing conditions of life, decent conditions of life to all citizens, not them, but each other of us. It is now uh, our self-assertion, our identity from something given to us had been transformed into individual personal task. And we, have, we are responsible now for finding such solution to socially produced problems. And that, of course, creates anxiety. Um, that creates condition of uncertainty, of constantly not being aware, not being aware what the next step should be taken, what kind of next step should be taken. You are not sure whether your decision is, very, is sufficiently well grounded, and therefore you need something. You need something from there. I would say that the fear of uh, over-caring, over-interfering, and overbearing state, which was the nightmare of my generation when I was a young, young person, had been replaced by the fear of being left to your own resources and incapable of selecting properly your the sense of your life, pursuing it, um, the certainty what you need to do in order to achieve uh, that sort of purpose. And uh, to secure yourself a decent place in society. We live, as you probably know, not in the times when the government, each successive government promised full employment, not very often keeping its promise, but anyway promising it and considering it quite, uh, uh, quite uh, um, achievable uh, purpose, uh, we are now in the time when redundancy, not unemployment, unemployment, ladies and gentlemen, is uh, 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 inadvertently, obliquely confirming the normality of employment. Normal life means having an accredited and not only promised but sustained place in society to play. I am needed. I am needed. There is a place, there must be a place um, in society and the very word unemployed by adding this un, this negation to employment uh, signals that Unemployment is abnormality. 
it's an illness, it's an ailment, something must be done to uh, abolish completely the fact of human unemployment. The idea of redundancy, which is used instead in the public language now, uh, doesn't suggest such a uh, 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 reform, um, cure of the social ailment. They, we are adjusting ourselves to the later in a very hard way to the possibility of becoming one of the redundant people. Fear of exclusion is the dominant fear of our time. We are not, uh, not uh, 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 rebelling against overbearing state. We are neglecting, we are rebelling today against being ignored, against being neglected, against being unseen. Well, my dear friend, that's where computers come in. Computers come in, computerization of the world, invention of internet. It, it's a sort of a magic wand, magic wand. It enables you, at least in the part of the day, and it is a very long part of the day, when you are not speaking to other human beings, but you are spe speaking and listening to the screen, you are mediating your co-presence with others. Uh, the, uh, uh, at, that time, at that time, you are escaping. You, at least it seems to escape, virtually escaping, virtually escaping this threat of being alone. Uh, you don't remember, you are too young, uh, you don't remember when the first uh, 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 gadget, electronic gadget, which you could take out of home on the stroll going on the street, uh, called Walkman, was introduced. Uh, this Walkman was introduced by the commercial slogan, never again alone. Now, I don't know who produced this slogan, but uh, who, who did it must have been a very insightful person. He just grasped the deepest suppressed fears of his contemporaries. Never again alone. It was a very primitive way of escaping loneliness. Walkman acted only one way. You could listen to it, but you couldn't reply. And then came the genius Mark Zuckerberg, uh, who went one decisive step further. Facebook. In Facebook, ladies and gentlemen, you are never alone. Really never alone. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, what you can do uh, is to send a Twitter, to send somebody a message, to receive a message. There is always 24 hours a day, seven days a week, someone somewhere who is ready to receive your message. The distance doesn't matter any longer. You don't have to be next door neighbor. On the contrary, next door neighbor may be more difficult to find because he may be out or uh, may not receive guests at the moment or whatever, but uh, uh, through internet, there is always someone who not only receives your message, but they may even respond to it. So the uh, feeling of loneliness may be suppressed. By what? By the fact that we are, in fact, a collection of loners, but loners who are constantly in touch. There is never a moment of loneliness. If you are sitting even among friends in a company or a party, I watch it many times, and you watch it, and you did it many times, I'm quite sure. Uh, if the situation became more, less interesting, if there was a boredom, um, uh, just uh, making their way in the company, then you could always escape the place, to be in different place, by connecting, by, by the 
magic wand of connecting. Instead of communities which suppressed you, which told you what to do, which watched you very carefully and right away interfered when you uh, deviated from the prescribed, uh, prescribed way of doing things. Now, this community has been replaced by network, as you very well know. And there's a big difference uh, uh, between community, between Gemeinschaft and uh, network. Uh, uh, for, uh, consisting in the fact that if community has you, you belong there. You have your network. Your network belongs to you. Belongs to you. That is reversal of the situation. Uh, uh, unlike community, which is just there, a social fact which is very difficult to resist, you have a network which is sustained in, real, in, in being by two activities, connecting and disconnecting. You can always connect at any time. It is childishly easy now, without any preliminaries, without any preface, you can contact other people. And at the same time, if you find them not much to your liking, rather, rather uh, constraining than opening new horizons, not giving much pleasure, not much satisfaction. Well, one move of your finger, there's a key called delete. You can always delete uh, from the list of friends to which your messages are going and exclude from, uh, from uh, uh, the network which you Compose and you are a recomposing all the time at will. That is the first great game. The virtual escape of this nightmare of being left alone. But there is also another uh, very great benefit. The benefit of um, escaping from the, uh, well, uh, conviction or rather feeling, very vague feeling, of being an important person, of being not particularly regarded. Mind you, ladies and gentlemen, at the moment when identity has become a task from being given by the fact of birth and determining the rest of your life, now it became the task which you personally have to perform. Once that happened, uh, much in our activity, whether we call it this name or not, whether we realize that or not, is a war for recognition. We want to be recognized. We, want to, we must represent ourselves in public and get recognition. Recognition which you can actually measure every day because whatever you put on the internet or website, there is a like attached, um, the, the, the number of people calling your website is there, you can actually measure how many people have seen you and so on. So you are seen, you are seen. And uh, entering the public scene is now available to virtually everybody who has some electronic gadget. It is not any longer the matter as it was still several dozen years ago, that in order to be seen in public, you would have to ingratiate very powerful companies, uh, the boards of the, uh, the widely read dailies or the board of the television broadcasting company. You have to convince them that directing the camera on your face is worthwhile. That you represent something which, is, which earned you the right of becoming acknowledged by public knowledge. Well, uh, now you have selfies. You can, each one of us can put selfie uh, on, the, on the screen in every pose, in every condition, which of your own selection, we have direct shortcut to the public sphere. 
Well, uh, all these games are, I repeat, virtual games. We are living in two universes, each of us. You can't help it. One, one universe in which we live is the online universe, and the other uh, uh, universe in which we live is the offline universe. They are different universes. They are different universes. The rules of behavior, rules of conduct, rules of uh, 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 distinguishing right way of doing things, of wrong way of doing things, in these two different uh, universes are starkly, strikingly different. Strikingly different. But there is always, from the hardship, from the difficulties, this inconvenience, discomfort, which negotiating human relationship in offline world still contains, you can always escape from it, thanks to the other alternative, alternative of the virtual world, of the online world. And Max Zuckerberg, as you know very well know, on this uh, 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 promotion of the new phenomenon, social website, social website, made billions on the stock exchanges. He just put his finger on the ailment of our time. Fear of being alone, think, uh, feeling from, uh, of, uh, fear of being not accepted, not recognized, or not being a matter, uh, an important matter to other people. We not, not so much can repair the situation which was uh, created by the um, uh, continuous process of individualization, shifting responsibility from community upon the individual shoulders. Um, well, uh, but, uh, <coughs> but uh, uh, at least forgetting about it. Stop worrying about it. Uh, according to latest sociological research, um, Average person today spends up to nine hours a day uh, in the front of some electronic gadget, in the front of some screen. So we, each of us spends quite a lot of time now uh, in the online world. And that is the instant respite. It brings us consolation, respite, relief from the hardship of daily life. So, that is probably, I suggest to you, ladies and gentlemen, the deepest cause of privacy losing its attractiveness. Of we, as David Brooks pointed out, are forgetting the meaning of privacy, the need of privacy, and even the language of privacy. We are using only the some, court, uh, some sort of a very reformed or deformed language, a uh, simplified language, which is the language of our uh, communications uh, through internet. Um, you are not, uh, when you are speaking about what you are doing, uh, working on internet, you are using the expression of surfing. Surfing means on the surface. You are not diving. You are not in deep. You are not stopping to reflect. You are just moving, and moving in a hurry, because you know that there are millions of uh, other websites which may be equally interesting, and which are waiting for your attention, and you miss an opportunity. The number of opportunities which internet opens is infinite. It's infinite. They are... Uh, in, one, in one day, in one day, the amount of information which is produced on the internet is million times greater than the, uh, than the absorbing ability of human brain. So to catch it all is out of the question, but you need to try. And uh, stopping trying is really a very dangerous proposition, which not very many people will accept. All right, 
Uh, what I told you already about uh, behind, the, behind uh, my narrative, there was the vision of weakening social bonds. They became uh, more and more frail. I just said uh, the phenomenon has been, has been described uh, many times uh, already in the press, so there's no uh, in the uh, scholarly studies, so there's no point of uh, going and repeating it. But uh, uh, the fact is that the number of uh, uh, families which gather every day at the dinner table fell in the last 30 years by 60%, and the number of, uh, and the number of times when people attended regularly every week, some sort of a club association, of which they were a dedicated member, went down by 42%. So the process is ongoing. The social bonds, offline social bonds, are falling apart, are weakening, becoming fragile, brittle, unsustainable in the long run, entered only until further notice, without strings attached, without commitment, long-term commitment. At the same time, as a reply to that, is incredibly fast-growing number of virtual corrections. Bonds are falling apart, then the virtual uh, response to it, to this new void which is being created around you, is, uh, uh, is uh, uh, growing up. Now, what, are the, what, they, what is the nature of connections which we establish on the uh, internet? Uh, one of uh, very, in, very uh, ingenious and uh, witty observer uh, pointed it out. We used to gossip over the fence about neighbors, gossiping over the fence with neighbors about other neighbors. Now we are gossiping, talking to each other on the internet, mostly um, to some strangers about some other strangers. These other strangers about whom you are gossiping, and you, I say you, I should say we, I am also a guilty one, uh, are uh, people who are called celebrities. Uh, you know uh, what is the definition of celebrity? The definition of celebrity is person who is known for being well known. Those persons, that's their title to fame. That's the um, contemporary replacement of the old idea of fame, which was something which you accorded to martyrs, who devoted their life uh, to a cause, to a you know, face, to, to a future of the nation or whatever, uh, or uh, he heroes who actually won great battles and introduced new uh, stage, new chapters opened in human history. Now, instead of fame, the problem is notoriety, being known, being known. Very often you are not aware uh, and you are not, uh, not entitled even to judge, to pass your own judgment, whether the notoriety is deserved or not. That is the matter for the managers of publicity. They are responsible for uh, making someone notorious. But uh, they are seen, they are constantly seen, constantly, not eternally, mind you, they are very well fit to the contemporary a kind of society which I personally called liquid, modernity, liquid modern society. A society which is constantly changing, which cannot keep its uh, uh, form, its shape for a long time. It is constantly changing uh, under smallest influence, uh, forces acting from a side, they change their form. Now, under, in this kind of society, the very fact that celebrities come and go, that whoever is on everybody's tongue today, tomorrow, 
may be forgotten and may play by someone else, is their virtue. They are fitting very well the atmosphere of the Harriet life, of, the, uh, of uh, living under tyranny of the moment. Uh, I would say, even I would go as far as saying that uh, our contemporary culture uh, is a culture not of learning, but culture, culture of forgetting, of forgetting. You have to be ready to absorb new information and to put aside information which yesterday was uh, actually the important one, the talk of the town, everybody spoke about, about but today it needs to make room uh, in your interest, among your concerns, for, advent, for coming of some new important topics and important person, uh, persons in your horizon. Um, well, uh, the uh, uh, celebrities <coughs> are uh, also very good uh, fitting into contemporary, uh, contemporary scene because they don't require long-term commitment. It is much better to engage oneself uh, in talking about, in establishing common interests, when gossiping about people who are strangers, who don't care about you, who are not even aware that you are one of their fans, that you are talking about them. You personally, they have no idea about your existence. Much more convenient than gossiping about the, uh, uh, over the fence about the next door neighbors. Because they don't require any commitment. You can even have simultaneously um, engage, be engaged in the cult of quite different celebrities. They don't mind that. You can do it. You can do it. So the celebrity replaced heroes of the past and martyrs of the past um, in concentrating, condensing, as, as surrounding oneself with human interests and uh, engaging human concerns and uh, human thinking. Well, uh, the, uh, I mentioned already Hotel Berlin Berlin, uh, apart from yeah, the slogan, which is over there, stay individual. There is also another slogan, stay entertained. And uh, the major fun function of celebrities is precisely to provide entertainment. We are uh, trained to be entertainment greedy. Uh, we find it very pleasurable. It is sometimes very pleasurable, sometimes it is very obtrusive, but then you have a choice, you can switch to another kind of entertainment. But that is major uh, power of celebrities. They provide entertainment, and provide entertainment which can be shared with others, because everybody knows about them, everybody watches them, everybody uh, follows the, uh, uh, their, their deeds, what they have done, their virtues and their vices. Uh, the fact that they are shown as being very much like us, not necessarily um, absolutely happy people, but suffering, suffering divorce after divorce and wedding after wedding. And, and failing to gain the uh, large enough audience here and there, that very fact uh, brings them closer to us. Their virtual existence for us, it is virtual existence, we hardly ever uh, meet them face to face, is uh, just, uh, in a sense, normalizing our, aim, our own faults, our own failings, our own misdeeds. And the last issue I would like to discuss in this context, ladies and gentlemen, uh, is uh, 
uh, is the question of uh, surveillance, electronic surveillance. I already mentioned it very briefly. You probably still remember, in spite of our living in a culture of forgetting and our attention span being shorter and shorter, namely that uh, we are voluntarily on our own will, unforced, participating in spying on ourselves. We are our own spies and we are also suppliers of the, pro suppliers of the product of, uh, of our spying activity. Ladies and gentlemen, if you took, uh, if you took together KGB, uh, CIA, Stasi, and all other secret uh, uh, services uh, of what, 50 years ago, they couldn't even dream about the amount of information which we voluntarily, daily, without being paid, even paying for the privilege, are supplying to the potential secret services of our times. They had to strain themselves. <laughs> well, that's the fact of the matter. You know, we are uh, uh, voluntary, I repeat what I said, we are voluntary uh, participants in the, act, in the uh, activity of universal surveillance. Um, well, the uh, Michel Foucault, if you still remember, there was a very great philosopher in the 20th century. He, he developed the idea of Jeremy Bentham, the uh, 18th, 19th century uh, scientist in Britain, idea of panopticon. Panopticon, panopticon, a place in which people were held together, held together in one room, and, and they were under surveillance. The Jeremy Bentham was convinced that there is architectural solution to the common task of controlling other people's behavior. Architectural solution. You need to build a tower in which supervisors are sitting, and then there are wings going in all directions where inmates are sitting. So that surveyors can always see what the inmates are doing, but they are unable to see whether there is, at this moment, a surveyor who actually is watching, uh, watching them. All kinds of control. It could be a good architectural solution for a school, for a hospital, for a prison, for a workhouse, for military barracks, whatever is a need for controlling other people's behavior, that is resolved. That was the idea of division of humanity between surveyors and surveyed, surveyed. On the one hand, people who watched, the other people who were watched. Now, the uh, situation again changed beyond recognition. There is no such division any longer. We are watched and watchers at the same time, at the same time. With consequences, no one can actually predict. The specialists, the high-class experts, are, least, are still working on, the, on algorithms which would allow to process this amazing, unheard of, uh, unprecedented amount of information which we already supplied to the cloud interneting, to the servers of cloud internet. Uh, whoever would like to uh, use them can. Uh, on the one hand, there are, of course, the uh, enforcement uh, agencies who, can, uh, who, knowing very well whom you are telephoning and knowing very well where you took your uh, mobile telephone, where you went, at what time, it all is recorded there, could put two and two together, find four, and find out that you are a member of some category of people which at, at the present moment is unwanted. Is unwanted and potentially uh, sus sus suspect 
of being potentially a criminal. And they can use it. And they are using some uh, more and more often. You read in the newspapers about the terrible mistakes being made, someone, someone being accused of, a, uh, of uh, committing a crime uh, only on the basis that coincidence of being some, at some point, at some time. And the other uh, where the, uh, these data are used are, of course, commercial interests. You probably know uh, from your own practice, as much as I do, that whenever you open a website uh, on the internet, you, need, you see commercials, but not just commercials, but commercials made especially for you. Whenever I open Amazon, I see the offers which are made, as it is written in big letters there, especially for you, Zygmunt. So I, know, so I feel elevated at the same time. Not only do they know my, well, what my interests are and what sort of books I read and what I buy and what I don't buy, but they also take care of me. They are actually the firm ground on which I can walk and never be, uh, never be uh, mistaken. Well, that's, uh, my dear friend, what I wanted roughly to tell you. Um, as I said, it was all very sim oversimplified because we are under pressure of time. <coughs> my last conclusion from all that is that we are, as I keep repeating, at the time of interregnum. Living in the time of interregnum, not of our choice, it so happened that we have been born and inserted in the time of interregnum. Time of interregnum, <laughs> that is a name for a situation in which old ways of doing things are not working properly any longer, <laughs> but new ways which are more efficient and more apt to resolve our genuine problems are not yet invented. That is the time of interregnum and we are at this moment. And when you are inside the time of interregnum, then making precision, uh, predictions, pretending that the future is already overdetermined, that it, you can also already tell uh, clearly and convincingly where it is going to bring us. Now, making such prediction is very, very irresponsible and dangerous. <coughs> what is needed is very close watching of the emerging consequences of the novel technological change in the background of our life. We are entering the new era in human history. I don't think that <laughs> even Gutenberg revolution which introduced first printing press and the possibility of access to the printed word could be compared with the upheaval which is made currently by the appearance of universally available, universally attainable, universally achievable, universally usable uh, electronic means of information. So we have to watch it very carefully. Well, we don't, uh, you shouldn't play the role of plankton, which is thrown here and there by the tides of the, of the sea in which one lives, but control, self-reflect. The great sociologists of our time keep uh, uh, the, uh, uh, calling the contemporary phase of modernity that it is reflexive modernity that people are self-reflecting about the consequences of their own action. Also, unanticipated, un unmotivated, inadvertent side effects, collateral casualties of their action. Now, personally, and it's my personal opinion, I don't want whether you accept it, I think that we are far from being reflexive enough. That we are just doing things but don't think about them very much. So with this uh, word of warning, I would like to thank you for your attention.
Sigmund Baumann, thank you.